All right, today we're doing a little longer term review on the uh, Kubota Zero Turn, and uh, it is foul weather is coming our way. <laughs> um, anyway, I just wanted to uh, really quick, uh, I think I've got about 10 mows. I've had this maybe two months. Um, it's been raining here a lot. Got a bunch of new grass that's growing, and uh, been trying to been trying to keep up with it all. It's about to come pouring rain here in a minute. Okay, out here mowing today in some, <laughs> some adverse conditions. Uh, got most of it taken care of, as you can see. I'm having to, <laughs> to deal with the rain. Got the mower back in. Uh, this is the uh, Kubota Z421. I've done a video on this when I first got it. Uh, after the first mower or two. I'm mowing about an uh, acre, maybe just a little bit over. Uh, these are not, uh, this is cost substantially more than what you will find at Lowe's, uh, et cetera. This is a, I purchased this at a Kubota dealer. Um, you can pick these up. They're, they're between the seven and $8,000 kind of price range. Um, and this is actually the upgraded unit. So if you get, uh, walk around here, you got a 60 inch deck. Now what that 60 inch deck gets you is these larger front casters um, and these are beefy. And as you can see that's uh, that's significant compared to a more of a residential style. Now I think this is still a residential class machine but it's it's kind of a prosumer uh, style machine. And you also get the upgraded tires. So these are much larger tires. Um, I live in the mountains and pretty much everything that I'm mowing is relatively steep hill. Plenty of power, uh, the hydro uh, static drive system uh, works really well, it's really smooth. Um, I don't know if you can see there, but I was able to park that with ease with very tight clearances and I do that pretty regularly. And it does really well about mowing around things. Everything on the engine is really easy to get to. I really haven't had to do a lot of work other than trying to do the first oil change, but obviously there, if you had to jump it off, it'd be really easy to get to. Fluid change is really easy. I do like the little side compartment. Um, the drink holder, the 12 volt plug. I think you can maybe see it there. The seat's comfortable. It does not have suspension seat. I may be adding one of those. Really doesn't affect me up in the front yard, but definitely down on this lower yard. Uh, I just seated. It's a little bumpy and uh, you got two options. You can either slow down or prepare to go airborne because uh, this thing really moves quick. Deck has been really easy to clean. Um, the rollers and everything are still in really good shape even though I've, I've done some fairly rough mowing. Uh, I mow a little, little piece of the field out there and where I've got my drive. Uh, Deck's uh, easy to get to. Basically, I pull both those covers off and just spray it off with uh, water hose. Uh, as you can see, you can get underneath the deck here. It's really pretty easy to spray out. Um, I just got done mowing, and really, that's that's all the grass that's kind of accumulated on it. So that's fairly good. Most of it comes out the chute and gets really finely ground up outside. Um, these, are, these are pretty standard. This is pretty much the same as every other lawnmower as far as your throttle, uh, your PTO engagement, and your key start. The uh, deck height adjustment is, is fairly unusual, but I like it. Basically, you press on that, that, that foot there and uh, lift up the deck, and then you can just dial in whatever deck setting you want. And while you're mowing, you can also push on that and raise the deck up. And if you uh, press it all the way down, it'll actually lock and unlock, kind of like a brake pedal works uh, in most modern cars that don't have a release. Uh, so you can lock this deck up without having to adjust your hot setting. That's one of the big things I noticed between it and some of the residential motors. Uh, they actually require you to actually set the deck height up at the max to hold the deck up to, just for transport. Uh, Trailer-wise, this 60-inch uh, deck does not fit on my 6x10 trailer unless I have that folded up. I think that's pretty common. Um, I really wish they had a way. I looked around. They don't really have a way of locking this up other than you know doing a bungee cord or a piece of rope or something. Um,
I have used the uh, little tow hitch back here a few times. It works better than I thought it would. It been a zero turn about towing, um, which is a pleasant surprise. Uh, now, for 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 all aspects of this mower, it's 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 the perfect size for what I have. It's a little bit beyond what I actually need to mow the yard. Which turned a I had a riding lawnmower before this. It was a Husqvarna. Uh, you know, I can actually mow the upper part of the yard, which is what I mow the most of, about once a week, in about 15 minutes. Um, I kind of have been adding up time on how much this cuts much better, much closer, much faster. Um, I think I'm saving almost an hour per mow just by having the mower, which is which is huge when you're mowing every week. You know, again, uh, for a um, someone that mows for a living for money, this I can I can see why these uh, make a lot of sense because it does save a lot of time. I have to do less weed eating. The actual mowing's faster. Um, I'm really surprised with the cut. The 60 inch deck is much wider than my old 46 inch deck that I had on my rider, and I was expecting more scalping. Did not did not get that. This actually does a really good job about cutting and staying. Uh, out of the dirt uh, with all the rollers that are on the front here. Uh, overall, I'm going to kind of jump on the machine, show you this, uh, what, I'm, what I was talking about on the deck. So, without, without doing any height adjustment, I can release the deck. I can raise the deck a little bit if I need to while I'm moving. Or if I'm ready to stop cutting and, and transport, you just push it all the way down, and when you release, it'll lock. And then the release, you just clip it again. So that's a really nice feature versus having to come over and actually adjust this knob or, or move pins or, or something like that. Uh, it does have a parking brake uh, that's foot-operated, not a lever-operated. Uh, I, I have not used this at all, you know, in an emergency. I'm, I'm, the handles and the big tires, it pretty much stays where you put it. However, um, a lot of times I'll actually kill the mower because you have to be real careful. If the arms are have to be folded out with a parking brake on to start it, and you need to remember to take the parking brake off before you fold these control arms, otherwise the motor dies. Um, and obviously, if you get off the lawnmower, this needs to be parked, otherwise the seat sensor will kick off and cause you some grief. It's uh, pretty much starting this mower, and this is pretty typical, at least of every Kawasaki that I've uh, ever had. Had a lot of colors. Um, it does have a choke, and you pretty much have to use it almost, unless it's just a really, really warm start, you end up having to use this choke uh, to get the mower started. Um, and the best way I've found to do that is have one hand on the choke, one hand on the uh, key, pull up, as soon as you hear the starter turn over, just tap it down and the mower will start. Mm. The big casters have definitely have made a difference. I've watched the uh, commercial guys over in my neighbor's yard. That's the biggest problem that they have is the, the caster wheels are much smaller and they dig in and it'll kind of, you know, force the mower into a certain direction. Uh, this pretty much goes wherever you put it. And it doesn't really sink down even if the ground's damp. Um, I just mowed and it kind of sprinkled a little bit and I'm going to give you a shot outside. I had to do some creative audio that I hope works out um, because it is absolutely pouring rain now. So I'm glad I got that done. Uh, overall construction, this is really probably several steps above. Uh, what you get at Lowe's as far as uh, build quality. Obviously the metal's a lot bigger. The front casters have these fittings. The uh, wheels on the casters have these fittings. Um, one thing I'll say on that is if you don't take care of your equipment, you know, what you're not you're not planning on actually greasing it, it's actually better to have sealed uh, units than to have the grease fittings. It will uh, leak out quicker because it's not really designed to hold the grease because it's so easy to add to it. That's one thing I'll say about that. If you're getting this, to, you know, you're not going to change the oil, you're not going to change the grease. You may be better better off getting a, a more residential style 
Uh, this, I basically just hit it with some grease every time I grease the tractor. Um, and that, that seems to be, if anything, especially on these front of caster wheels, it may be a little too much. Um, there's not a super seal on that, so there's a little plastic and steel bushing that the grease will just kind of come out of, and I've got to keep wiping that grease off. Um, what I've gotten in the habit of doing is I'll actually just kind of lift the front of the mower up and just wiggle those casters around to make sure that they feel like they have grease rather than just continuing to, you know, push grease out uh, needlessly. They, they actually stay, stay well greased. Um, this, this mower isn't like my razor. It's not going through really tough terrain and water. Um, so it's uh, protected because it's up off the ground. And really, the only time the grease is going to come out is when there's pressure or enough movement to actually work enough of it out. The seating position, um, I'm pretty happy with. This is going to come great to the camera. But basically, it hits about right here on my legs. So I've got plenty of room. This is all the way back, and there's about that much room still left between me and the handles, sitting back in a normal position. Um, this is comfortable to me. Um, one thing I will say is, uh, a couple of the other units, I actually tried, I don't remember what the brand was. It may have been a Toro, but, um, so I was actually playing with a Toro and it wasn't, I was not able to steer like this. So on this mower, as you can see, these are fairly staying kind of where you put them, especially when you have a crank and you have pressure on it. Um, it just takes like just a little bit of pressure and you can one hand it, like you know, if you you got your drink here and you want to grab something to drink and you're in a relatively safe area, don't do this around hills. But this will work great if you're wanting to take a drink. Um, you can actually still steer the mower. You can do full circles, everything one handed, just by keeping your hand here. Now, typically when I'm when I'm mowing, um, hand position wise, I, I seem to kind of favor this for for lounge uh, mowing. And then when things get a little more tense, I'll actually bring both hands up closer to here with the thumb on here. That, that seems to provide a little bit better control. And I'll lift my back slightly up off the seat. Because um, what that'll prevent is you, you know, the bumps, you know, causing this to uh, move around because it, it makes drastic changes in your, your drive travel speed. Um, this, this Mower X actually has uh, three blades. Um, they are very easy to clean out. Uh, I think I, you know, at least this side blade over here, I have not sharpened these yet, but they look like uh, you could do kind of a, like at least a cleanup sharpen with, it, with them still on the deck. Because the deck is so high, it's so thick, that the you know, blade system sits well below the deck, the top of the deck. Um, they, they, they look really easy to get off. I haven't tried to take one off yet. Um, but I don't think sharpening is going to be an issue or getting the blades off. That was my biggest complaint with the Husqvarna. Um, the bolt head and all of the assembly underneath there would just get gooped up with stuff no matter what you did. And it was really hard to get off. And a lot of times when you took that off, um, you would find that, you know, the housing or what have you of the blade spindle was actually broke and it didn't take a lot. You could hit like a relatively small root or something, which I have around here all the time. And you would end up having to replace the whole spindle just to just to swap out blades. Getting on and off the machine, I found it really easy to get off either side. Uh, the only thing you've got to remember is do not step on those plastic pieces. They will bust, they will break. Um, they're, they're just little plastic covers that you don't need any tools to get them off. You basically just grab a hold of one side and pinch and the plastic cover will come off and that's on both sides. So when you step to get off, you're actually wanting to step on the deck itself um, or you can just pretty easily just go right out the front of the machine. Um, one of the, uh, I'll get on my complaint list now and this is really um, not a huge deal. But as you can see, it's wet. I've got boots on. Yes, it does have these little dimple by uh, things, but as you can see, 
I mean, it's wet. This, the top of this deck might as well be an ice rating scheme. Uh, the top of this deck might as well be an ice rating rink. Um, if, if they, you know, rhino line this or put some kind of tread material, I may put some on later. So there's enough room where you could do like a diagonal pattern in between the uh, dots. Um, it kind of does have an unusual pattern right up here. Um, it's not necessarily symmetric, and this this is uh, this you would need to do a diagonal pattern on as well. Um, but that happens all the time. You get off the mower, and it's you know you know in the morning wet wet damp grass. You gotta be real careful. And the deck is completely smooth, um, so you want to be careful of getting on and off this thing. I think uh, if they added like a little grip pad on the deck and it will show you you know be more apparent where you should step or where you can step. I think that would help a lot, and it's one of the reasons that having the black covers kind of your foot kind of wants to go there because it looks not as slick as the deck is. Um, I've weaned myself from that at this point, but I think it'd be really nice if they had something to actually step out on and keep your feet uh, from sliding around. Um, the roll bar just the rocks on this, I like. I don't have any complaints. Um, one thing that I think they might have done differently is maybe put uh, tabs on the uh, rocks. I'll kind of spin up here. The rocks let it get focused, but you can see this is, this is square tube and it's completely smooth. There's no holes. Um, you know, having a rock system, having to drill or weld on it, you don't really want to do. The only option you have to put a light bar or something like that on there is to... Uh, to actually do it, make a mounting clamp system, which I'll probably end up doing at some point. Uh, here lately, uh, if I, especially if I'm working, uh, you know, you get home, you eat dinner, you start mowing, and you, you basically finish most of the mowing before it gets super dark, but it never fails, especially with me. I get down to the shop and it's dark before I actually get the lawnmower back into the building. Um, and with no lights, these don't come with any lights, uh, unlike my Husqvarna rider, it actually had lots so you could get it in the building. Obviously, my tractor has lots, so I'm kind of used to that. Um, so, this is kind of a weird thing. Um, I think they could make it a little easier to add lots, too. I've noticed some of the other manufacturers, they make a lot kit for the front. I haven't found one for this, but um, I, I typically, with these type, type of equipment, I'd rather have something up on the bar. Uh, it enables you to see a lot better. Fuel, that's my only other big complaint. I'm gonna spin the camera around here. Uh, so this is this is how you tell how much fuel you have. There is an alternative method. It's really hard to see, or at least it is most of the time, how much fuel's in here. But you can actually lift the seat up. It actually springs up. And uh, when you lift the seat up, you can see the whole tank and you can kind of get a better idea how much fuel. It just, it's just kind of strange to me that it doesn't have, you know, even even a mechanical uh, tank gauge uh, would be nice. And I understand why they didn't do it here because it's nozzled down and this doesn't actually go down into the main part of the tank. Um, but they could have done a floater or, you know, a simple electronic float or something that would have made it a little easier to protect gas. For me, it hasn't been a huge issue. I just, I just basically every time I go get gas, Whatever spare fuel I don't put in the razor, I, I empty into this. Um, this ends up being a, a gas can. Uh, it gets the my main gas can empty, so I can know to go fill it when it's when it's empty and I've, I've not run out. Uh, deck removal. Uh, I have removed uh, the deck once. It's, it takes like five minutes. Basically, have these pins here that you pull out the uh, routing for the belt. Uh, it's displayed on the deck. It's pretty easy to get the belt back on the way it's supposed to go on. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention on this, this will come up, especially if you ever have a problem. Let me see if I can get a camera shot. So there are the release pins uh, to release the drive. And there's two of them. There's one on each side. Shot of that. 
maybe. There we go. Hopefully that comes from camera, but it's just slightly further back. Um, other control wise, this is to release the seat. So you pull on this, it's a bar, you can get to it from the other side, and the whole seat assembly will flip up. The ROPS has a pin in multiple settings. You can lay this back. Um, I tend to prefer leaving it where it came from the factory just simply because I don't want to have to tighten up all this stuff to, to prevent any rattles. I'm always able to keep my gloves with me. Um, nice little pocket here. It's got kind of a carbon fiber finish looking like stuff down in the bottom. Uh, the cup holder does have a drain hole on both sides. Um, and there's this little pocket here which uh, you can put your iPhone and then a charging port here. It, <clears throat> mowing performance though, this is probably 10 times the mower that uh, the little rider Husqvarna. Um, I'm mowing faster, uh, the cut's better, and uh, I know there's a lot less cleanup work and work, and this, this pretty much starts every time that I try to start it. The Husqvarna had a Kohler engine in it, and uh, about every two or three years, I would have to do some kind of carburetor work. Usually it was the, uh, the fuel solenoid down at the bottom of the carburetor. This has something similar, but what I've noticed is the uh, Kohler design has that sitting really close to the engine where it gets hot. And this design, it's nowhere close to the engine. It's basically hanging out, out in the open air. So I don't expect I'll have a problem with that. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to get some quick footage. Uh, barely made it in the rain. I intended to shoot this outside and actually uh, get this on some hills and show you, but it came an absolute downpour. Um, Hill-wise, this, this thing really surprised me. I, I was not expecting to be able to mow the entire yard, um, so it, I was really happy. This Every flat surface uh, that's mowable on my yard, um, with the exception of that bank right there, which nothing's going to mow that. I can barely stand on it to weed it. Uh, it mowed everywhere and that, those were places that the rider would not mow. Um, the rider would not mow next to this driveway down that hill on the back side. It would not mow that. Um, actually it, I had a tough time even getting off the gravel. It didn't want to go up that hill. This will go up and down the hill. Um, I mowed sections of it sideways. The front yard's about as steep um, and I'm able to actually Instead of going up and down like this, I'm actually going and just making pass. So something that used to take me 30 minutes to do this number a million times in a, in a confined space, I basically come around with a zero turn on the bottom, spin, and mow. And it, it basically takes three swaps at you know, normal speed mowing, no stops and goes. That made a huge difference. Anyway, I hope you liked the videos. If you have any questions about this zero turn, um, I will shoot the, probably the next time that I mow that I'm not pressed for weather. I'll try to get some footage of this thing cutting grass. Um, but this is an excellent mower. I, I, I wasn't able to find a whole lot about them online or on YouTube. Um, you know, most, most folks are doing it, buying professional mowers, uh, and I just haven't seen a lot of people using Kubota. And I'm not a super Kubota fan. I don't, obviously, I don't, I don't have one of their tractors, but their mower um, and their excavators are excellent. Um, I will say that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.